The Nats are calling up their number one prospect, and this could change the whole trajectory of the National League East. So what what exactly is that? Well, let's get into it. 1-0 turned on out to deep right and field. Going deep to left center. Drifting with it. He's got the ball. Falling into that triangle. Runner went all the way to... Just got under that one. It's still... He's taking off. He's going for two, and he's going to be out. Lane Thomas. Welcome back to the Touching Base Podcast. Good to see your smiling faces again. If you're new here, wait till the end to let me earn your subscription and then like the video. Leave a comment below why you didn't. And if you disagree with this video, we're talking about someone special and I'm talking someone real special. James Wood. No, no, not Woods. Wood received the call yesterday as of this video, and it's a long time coming. After his hamstring injury, he will join the team on Monday for their homestead run. With Joey Gallo out, he may take DH just to make sure that he's 100%, but I doubt the Nats will do that with Winker on the field over Wood when Winker is so hot at the plate and I wouldn't say the best defensively. Jacob Young will obviously stay in the lineup along with Lane Thomas who's doing so well at the plate and Thomas has been great defensive weapons so even though he will be the lesser of the three at this point I see Rosario getting sent down or benched as a backup or DFA. This could open talks for trades that could get the Nats some negotiation for infield or rotation arms. There are so many outfield options on this team it's it's added such great value to their trading stock. Wood has had some issues against left-handed pitching, only 15 hits this season with only 53 plate appearances. Still batting a 326, but against right-handed pitching, his batting is a 361 in 178 plate appearances. So clearly they keep him away from left-handed pitching. Either way, he has an OPS over a thousand, and this is extremely exciting to see. And as I drop this video, we will see his debut today. Will he holiday it? And you know exactly what I'm talking about. 3-2, and that's a swing and a miss. And Holiday strikes out. That one is called. And he strikes out looking. Or is he going to be like the Nats' Vladimir Guerrero Sr. of the Expos? Now this raises a big question. Do the Nats have the best outfield in the National League? That's a hard answer with nothing for reference. So I will say if Wood can put up the same numbers in the MLB as he does in AAA, if he can, he will display similar numbers to Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge. Better OPSs than Juan Soto, Gunnar Henderson, Bryce Harper, Kyle Tucker, and Marcel Ozuna. Yes, I know that is him in AAA, but you need to understand that he is right now the MVP of AAA. Hands down. It's insane how well he's doing. Jesse Winker is number 46 with a 789 OPS in the MLB. He is the left field position, technically, that's what he's designated to, but I could see him going DH. It really depends on Wood's hamstring. Lane Thomas is batting a 238 with 8 home runs and 49 hits. Although not an all-star, he is posting an OPS plus of 102 and like I said great defensively and I think that's where he's getting a lot of his love. Jacob Young on the other hand is batting a 272 with 59 hits and one home run. He is like the Luis Arise of this team. Not a lot of power but contact is key. Only slugging at 341 he still holds a 2.2 war which is the highest on the entire Nationals team. Don't get all riled up in the comments. I understand it's the Nationals. They're not super power Dodgers or anything like that, but having a 2.2 war where you only have one home run kind of proves that you're doing something right. So do the Nats have the best outfield in the NL? Stats wise, yeah, they might. It's arguable, and yeah, probably right that the Padres have the best outfield right now. Profar leading the NL outfield in OPS at 894, and Tatis running up right behind him with 822. Their third outfielder is the rookie Jackson Merrill, who's been great. He's at number eight in the NL with a 757 OPS. So hitting rise as far as on base and slugging percentage, Padres probably take the cake. But with Jesse Winker at number six, if Young can sustain his bat as far as getting on base and keeping his average up, Thomas with a great defense would could push them to the top and be a glorified outfield. That is quite literally what he'll do if he's able to put up thousand plus numbers for OPS. Now, if we also pick on the best team in the NL, the Phillies, they're actually struggling at the plate with their outfield. With Marsh just coming back and from his injury and leading the outfield with an OPS plus of 122, the others are at a 64 and 87. Castellanos with an OPS of 660, which sounds great, I mean, considering, is only batting a 222. So he's not really getting on base that often. And it's his slugging, it's his big hits every once in a while 
while that's keeping the OPS up. And 222 is obviously a rough year for him compared to his career average, which is a 279. So with that said, what do you guys think about Wood coming up to play for the Nats? His debut is going to be today, Monday. I'm recording this a couple days early, but we're going to be releasing this right before his game starts so you guys can kind of take in some of this excitement as we're waiting to see what he will do in the bigs. This will be his major league debut. This will be his nationals debut. This will be his debut as an MVP caliber triple-a player coming to the bigs and i think and i hope that he's going to do much better than jackson holiday but what do you guys think like the video if you are still here subscribe if you've seen more than one video and if you haven't you're going to click these next links that are going to pop up here and i love you just to understand that i love you and if nobody else does i'm here for you leave a comment with a heart or something i don't know bye